Hey, this is Gail with Bernina of Naperville, and today I'm just going to tell you how to use the cutest darn little thing. See that little guy right there? I mean, this is the Bernina Cutwork Tool. You use it in conjunction with foot number 44, and you can cut things. This says joy. I know you can't tell, but I swear it does. And uh, I have some designs that I've made for you. So if you like this video and you want to make our placemat, please check out our Cutwork placemat files. The link to them is right in the description of this video. But um, there you can buy the files that you see me use right in this video, and that way you can make your own placemats, no software necessary. Now, you will need to have an 880 with the jumbo hoop if you wanna cut the little, uh, those little gentle curved stripes that you see there. You're gonna need the uh, jumbo hoop to do that, However, if you're fine just stitching a background or putting these on a plain placemat, all you're gonna have to do is just simply take, pick your word, eat or joy, and put them on some placemats. I mean, maybe you'll put eat and joy on one placemat. I don't know, it's up to you. They're gonna be your placemats. Anyway, why don't we go ahead and get started to see how we use this fun little guy. Let's talk a little bit about the inspiration for this cut work placemat. So I made this fair amount of years ago, probably when the Bernina Cutwork tool came out. And, uh, you know, I got a lot of compliments on it. It's been washed. I use these in my house all the time. Uh, picked a simple font, did a little um, cutwork pieces for these curved pieces. So the whole thing pretty much incorporates cutwork and embroidery, and it's pretty simple to do. Now, this tutorial is not going to cover making the designs because I am providing you an opportunity to download designs to make what we're making in this tutorial. So there's a link in this video description. You can also find this at BerninaofNaperville.com. But this was the inspiration. Now, let's have a look at what we're going to be making. And your files, they're going to be two different ones. There's one that says eat and one that says joy because we are at the holiday time. So here's a work in progress. And you can see here we have eat in the sage green. And then in these nice fall colors, we have our different uh, curved piece pieces that go together. So this is kind of what we're going to be making today, only this time we're going to do it in our holiday fabric and it's going to say joy. And what's really fun about this is when I cut out these eight pieces, I was able to do all six for the placemats at the same time. So it is way less tedious than having to use scissors to cut out all of these different pieces. And also here is the pieces from our fall. Our fall piece. So these are going to be pieced together and I'm going to show you how to do all of this from start to finish using the files that you can purchase from Bernina of Naperville. So the first step and that's in making these curved pieces. We need about an Nine 8 inch by 11 by inch inches. pieces and there's two of each of six different fabrics and you're going to stack them all with the face up and with the tops of the fabric if it's directional facing the same direction so please do not put them wrong sides together or anything we want them all pretty sides up just like this okay so once you have that you're going to load your designs onto your usb stick and you're going to use your bernina 880 with the jumbo hoop now a little bit of hooping prep. For this project, you're gonna need two pieces of a heavyweight cutaway or a medium weight tear away that are sized to fit in the jumbo hoop. One of them is to cut out our pieces for the curved strips. And then the other piece is for the words that you opt to use. And remember, you're gonna get either eat or joy. So I'm just taking my jumbo hoop loosening it and squeezing it in the hoop. Now one of the reminders because we are getting ready to do our curved pieces 
for our little strips in the background. This can only be done on the jumbo hoop in the 880. So if you do not have an 880 and a jumbo hoop, this is not gonna work so well for you because the cut work files cannot be resized. So keep that in mind. Now, if you had software and that kind of thing, if you had the Bernina embroidery software or the cut work software, you would be able to kind of retrace it and make your own so it would fit in the largest tube that you have. But I just wanna give a disclaimer that this tutorial focuses mostly on the Bernina 8 series with the jumbo hoop. All right, so once we get this squeezed in here, it's truly time to go over to our sewing machine. So I've picked my little cut work design here that you can see, and it's totally filling that jumbo hoop, particularly since we have to tell it that we're using foot number 44C, which is the foot that coordinates with the cut work tool, and we have to use the cut work plate. So all I'm gonna do now is just simply hit the ready to sew button, and that's gonna move my embroidery arm into position. And then it's gonna have me put the hoop on, which I'm doing. I clipped it into place. And now I want you to pay attention to this basting box. I wanna have a little basting line around here so I can just stitch onto my stabilizer so I know where to put my stack of eight inch by 11 inch material. And one more thing before you get started cutting, don't forget to sequence your colors together. That way, what once says 14 will be reduced to six. So it's less turning of that little cut work tool for you. So now I'm gonna go ahead and stitch. I just wanna back up this color back to the basting using my little arrows so that I can go back now and stitch my fabrics down into place with this same type of basting stitch. Now it's time to change the to the cut work tool. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna unthread the needle, getting that thread all the way out of the channel. We want zero thread up above in the machine. You can leave the bobbin in, that's fine. And then you're going to remove the needle Okay, and you're gonna replace it with the cut work tool. Much like the needles, it's got the flat piece that goes towards the back, and you're gonna put that in there, and then you're gonna need to move this little dial here to whatever number the machine tells you to start with. And normally it starts with one, but don't take that for granted. Make sure you read your machine just like you would read the colors on the machine. And we're starting with cut position number one. So we're gonna turn our cut work tool here to where it says number one. simply have to change the cut work tool to position number two and start again. And now position four. Now we're going to go to position number three. Sometimes it's out of order, so just make sure that you look at the screen to make sure which position you're adjusting your, your cut work tool to. A 
Okay, so our pieces are all cut out. Um, sometimes they have like a little bit of strings still connecting them. That's especially true when we're not using any fusible web or anything like that. But I'm just gonna liberate these with my little sharp embroidery scissors. And then these are gonna be ready to be stitched together. And of course, I'm gonna show you how to do that. But while we're already in cut work mode, we're gonna cut the joy. We're going to cut that out. So let's see how that works. So now we're going to do our words, joy. We're getting ready to cut those out. So I have put the needle back in. I've threaded the machine. I've got a new piece of stabilizer on here and I've select the basting marker. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch this out. And now I'm going to back up again to the basting stitch. And now I'm adding my fused pieces. So these are about five and a half by nine and a half inch pieces here. And they've got the fusible web on them. This is heat and bond light. And I am just gonna simply place this down. Don't peel the paper until the end. And I'm just lining this up just like so. And now we're gonna stitch. All right, it's time to remove the needle, to remove the thread. and put in our cut work tool. And don't forget about this simple thing, pressing the resequencing button so that when you stitch, all of the cut one, cut two, cut three, cut four are grouped together. We're going to stitch with position one. Now I'm switching to position two. Position three. Now, something I wanted to mention is that the thicker the fabric and the fusible web and all of that stuff is, is the cleaner cut that you get with this. So this is going to cut with a much cleaner edge than the other bit that you saw us cut. However, what's really nice is that the other piece, we're going to have a quarter inch seam going on, so you're not going to notice anyway. One more time with position four. All right, let's have a look. So here's our piece, and I'm gonna just pop off the hoop gently and raise our presser foot. And you can see here how much fun this is gonna be. And so this is gonna be ready as soon as I pick this out of here. This is gonna be ready to stitch onto our placemats once we actually piece them together. So now I'm gonna go over to a smaller machine with a quarter inch foot and we're going to do some gentle curved piecing. I'm working on a Bernina 350. It's a trade-in and it's a super cute one, um, but all I need is my normal patchwork foot. So this is just the standard number 37. For my curved piecing, I don't even want to do like a guide or anything like that. I just like this traditional old patchwork foot. And then I am going to just go through, and it's really important to keep your pieces that as they came off the cut work tool straight so that you get the right ones lining up with the correct one. So in this case, and of course you can see here, I'm using my pink thread, but I'm actually sewing together my fall color pieces. <laughs> but anyway, I'm gonna line these up. And when I line these up, you're also gonna notice that I leave like a little dog ear there and then I'm gonna raise my 
foot. And the freehand system is really nice to have when you're doing things like this. And now all I'm going to do is just gently encourage these fabrics to line up together right at that quarter of an inch mark. Just like this. Little gentle curve. And then I'm going to just lift and cut and open this up. Now that's a super skinny little seam, but it came out great. So now I'm going to take another piece, different fabric, but another piece to go next to this one here. Just like that. You can see I'm, I'm leaving like a little edge there that's about a quarter of an inch away from the edge to that V. And then lining this up again. There we go. Do a few stitches. Line everything up perfectly. There we go. And there's that one. And so all of these go together very easily with this gentle curved piecing. So now I've got another one that I want to line up here. Once again, leaving a little dog ear at the top. And then I have one more unit to sew on the end here. And then what this is, is this is one hooping. So, you know, when you saw our five little pieces that were cut with that cut work tool, well, this is all five of them stitched together. So we actually need to make one of these and then pair it with another one. But before we get that far, we've got to sew this together one more time. You can also see that I don't pin when I do this technique. I really don't think it's necessary as long as you just kind of ease these pieces in together as you're sewing. And I'm holding my hand down here to steady the bottom piece. So I'm holding this one here and then kind of guiding with this one like that. And see how I'm bringing them together here. And it's important to sew with your needle down engaged. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to press this one and sew it together with the other set. All right, so when you press these, the most important thing is just to let the seams kind of go in the direction that they want to go in. And now I'm going to put these two guys together. It's a very gentle curve. In fact, I'm going to be honest with you, it was supposed to be a straight line, but sometimes fabric wiggles. And when we have something super skinny like that, it's not always super straight. Now I'm going to piece this together, but at the end, we're going to square it up anyway. So it doesn't have to be perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, there we go. Only a gajillion left.
<laughs> As you can see here, we have something almost square, but a placemat is approximately 14 by 18 inches. So I'm gonna trim and then I'm gonna have to add a little bit onto each side. So the first thing is to kind of measure and see what we have here. I have something that's going to be about 10 and 3 quarters by 10 and 3 quarters. So I'm going to go ahead and just square this up. All right, now we're good. And I'll put that aside. Now I have another piece here. Let's measure this one. This one is going to be about 10 and a half by 10 and a half. I might have gotten a little extra with my seam allowances on this one. Okay, we'll do the 10 and a half. All right, so now what I want to do for my sides and my top. So I'm going to cut two pieces that are five inches by ten and three quarters for each side of this. And then for the top, it's going to be two one and a half inch strips that'll be about 20 inches long. And then I'll square this up at the end after it's quilted. So I, there, this is the cutest thing I think I've made in a really long time, or at least I feel like it anyway. Um, so now the big to do is where do we want to put joy on here? So um, just to recap, I added a five inch piece on each side, and then I actually ended up cutting a three inch strip for the top and bottom. And this is maybe a little bit bigger than this needs to be, but I'm gonna, we're gonna be embroidering joy on this placemat. I'm gonna be tearing off stabilizer. I'm gonna be quilting it. So it's okay if it's a little bit bigger than it needs to be at this point. Okay, so now the key is where do we wanna put joy? Do we want it right in the middle? Do we want it on the end? And I can tell you right now, I'm kind of digging it right in this corner just like that, because asymmetry is modern, don't you know? So we're gonna put the joy just like that, and I'm gonna embroider this down. So I'm gonna use a bright red thread for my applique on this. What do you think? Okay, so now I'm gonna get another bit of stabilizer that I'm going to hoop up, and I'm gonna show you how awesome this is gonna be. All right, so I've switched to the large hoop, which should be enough for our joy. And I'm just going to kind of line this up. And you know, instead of trying to draw some angle, whatever, I'm lining up one corner of my large hoop with another corner there. And then joy is going to go somewhere in there. And I'm totally happy with that. I'm also happy with putting joy in a different spot on each one of my placemats. So now I'm just going to loosen up my screw a little bit and then get this guy into position. There we go. Just need to give it a little bit of coaxing here. Oh, I love it. Tighten it up. And now let's go do some applique. Joy, there it is. All right, and you can see here when we take our 44 foot off and use the 26 again, that this is gonna fit right in our large hoop. So here's my little public disclaimer. Most of this tutorial is done on the eight series. If you want to do just the lettering, I have created files that will work in the MIDI hoop. So if you have a machine and the largest hoop is possible is the MIDI hoop, you can still use these files. You just won't be able to use the one where we cut our little curves for the curved piece background. All right, 
Enough about that. Let's take our attention down below, right down here. So I've hooped up my design, or my hoop. I've hooped this up so it's on this 45 degree angle. And now the best part about this, I've got red cotton orophil thread in the machine. The best part about this, quite honestly, is that it doesn't have to be accurate. And you can do this however you want. I'm not even gonna check the positions. I'm pretty happy exactly with the way that this is gonna look. So I'm gonna just go ahead and stitch, and this is gonna stitch the outline of where I'm gonna iron down our Joy cut work. All right, so now we're not going to take this out of the hoop. We're peeling the paper off of our Joy lettering. And don't forget the little dot for the J. I had a few of these just now fall in the trash can, and you should have seen the mess as I was looking for it. So, um, so we need this, and we need that. And I'm going to go over to the iron after I get everything nice and lined up right within those stitching lines, I'm gonna give it a pressing. And I can kind of manipulate that better at the ironing board. So I'm gonna show you before I start stitching what that looks like. The goal is to place your fabric right within that placement stitch. And I think I've done a pretty good job of doing that. So now, and I in my little Laura Star iron head gets right in there. So now I'm gonna place this back on the machine and now it's gonna do the covering stitch or the applique stitch, which is this applique stitch, which is a blanket stitch. So let's go ahead and give that a try. And then one thing about the 880 that's awesome is it's gonna stitch for just a little bit. And then you hear that? That lets me pull the tail away. I don't even have to snip the tail. It's so awesome. So now, all this needs is some batting, a little bit of quilting. I'm gonna do something very similar to what you see on this quilt behind me here. Just some swervy little lines to kind of hold things together. And then this is gonna be ready. You know, I once had a martini that came with like pink cotton candy loaded in it. And I think that that's what I'm gonna to have to drink when I'm using these. Don't you think my little Joy placemat turned out just fantastic? And like I said, it's perfect for a little pink martini. Maybe some hors d'oeuvres, a jello mold, you know, something like that on it. <laughs> well, and you know, this video on how to put the placemat together is not where it ends. There's a part two or a software version tutorial that you also want to check out. So you know what to do. If you want to see that video and other similar or different or some stories, don't forget to check out our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And there you can like, comment, and subscribe. So if you have the Bernina embroidery software, why don't you go ahead and check out our digitizing cut and joy tutorial so that, hey, maybe you'll find a different font you want to make yours in or even a different word. All right, until later, see ya. Bye-bye.